Hello, today I received this security key via the mail today and I'm going to install it into my IBM X3650 M3 model. This is going to allow me to remote control into the server via the system management port, but I had to purchase this for this to happen. So I'm going to install this and just show you guys where it, where it goes when you install this into the server. And then we'll go back into the to my main PC and I'll show you how to remote control into the server. So I'm going to turn it off. I've already shut down all the virtual machines earlier. Made sure they were all off. Then I'm going to shut it down. So this is actually going to install, let's see if I can get the camera over here. We're going to install this key into this, this port. Looks pretty simple and it looks like it's keyed. So it will fit, Let's see if I can get a better angle. So it looks like it's keyed to actually fit right there. And that is it. So this key is going to allow me to remote control via the system management port. Alright, my mic was not recording on the previous video, so let's do this again. So I'm using Internet Explorer to connect remotely to the system management port on the back of the server. In an earlier video, I set it to .99, so I've already made those changes earlier, so I don't need to make those changes now. I just need to connect to this web to this IP via the browser. So once I'm connected, I'm going to log in with user ID for the password. And password is going to be password. All caps, and instead of an O, it's a zero. All right, let's try that again. I'm going to give it a timeout value for five minutes. And earlier, when I tried to connect via remote control on this tab here, 
I could not. Now that the key is installed, I have this page. And I had to install Java, and then I had to allow Java security tab 129.103.2.99. So I'm going to go ahead and open it, and I will show you what I had to do for Java to work in the configure Java settings under security I had to add the IP address that I use for the system management port once that was keyed in now I'm able to remote control the server via the system management port now, the main reason I wanted this feature is not only just to connect to the ESXi um, itself uh, if I need to shut it down for for whatever reason if I don't have access via the client and I also wanted to be able to control the BIOS so you can also change BIOS settings using this remote control option so I'm gonna go ahead and shut it down here and and have my numlock key on I'm gonna do a restart so we should see this in action now the VMs are all the VMs are shut down so we're gonna let it restart and then when it when it reboots I want to be able to access the BIOS and make sure that that works so this will be actually the first time I've tried accessing the BIOS via the remote I you know the system management port remote control all right, we see the UEFI platform initialization that usually shows up uh, when you hook up a monitor to the server. This is really, really cool. So I can do all this remotely. This is a very, very nice feature. Now that system, that, that key for the management port, I paid $12.99 on eBay. So that's not too bad at all. This process is a little slow. We will get there. I may speed this up. Setup. Here we go. F1. F1 gets me into the BIOS. And originally, when I set this up for the system management port, it was under the IMM integrated management module. And here is where I configured the static IP so I can access this machine via the browser remotely from my PC in my office here. All right, I just wanted to show you guys that you can access the BIOS uh, via remote control through the system management port. So this will conclude my video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And if you like the video, please press thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down. I will see you in the next one.